In this video, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at variable scope. And what that's going to refer to is basically the extent or the use of a variable after we create it, um, as far as what it, the range that it reaches to. So if I create a variable, where can I use it in my code? And so I'm going to go ahead and start by creating a new application. So we'll just go to File, New, Project. And let's go ahead and call this one variable scope. And I'll go ahead and hit OK. And then what I want to do is uh, I'm going to start off by just simply adding a button to my form so that way we can work with the click event for our button here. So I'll just double click it. And let's go ahead and begin. Now the three that I want to talk about, there's three different basic scope levels that I want to focus on. I'm going to start with the smallest or the most limited uh, of the three. And that one sometimes is referred to as a nested scope. And so how that's going to begin is if I create a simple if statement, if, and now I'm just going to put a statement in here that's true, 5 is less than 7. It's a true statement. I'm going to go ahead and come down here, put my curly braces in there for my uh, code, a block of code, and now what I'm going to go ahead and focus on is um, creating an integer or a string. So I'm going to just go ahead and say string, and I'm going to say um, my name, and I'm going to go ahead and set it equal to Matt. There we go. And let's go ahead and end that with a semicolon. Now that's okay for us to do. We've created a string. This is normal stuff. I'm just going to do a message box dot show and I'm just going to go ahead and say show the my name. So, so far everything's just kind of simple. Now what I want to focus on is this. Once I've created this I've got a limit or I'm limited as far as its use. So for instance as soon as I leave my if statement, if I try to, let's say, use that my name variable. So let's just go ahead and I'll try my name. And if you notice that under the IntelliSense it did not show up. I can go ahead and say equals Matthew. Let's say I made a mistake or I wanted to change it. You're going to notice that I've got a red squiggly line. If I hover over it, it's going to tell me that it does not exist. And you're going to say, wait a minute, it does exist. I created it right here. Well, here's the thing, or here's the issue that we've got. The use of that scope is only contained within this if statement. This is what's referred to as a scope. And so I cannot use this or basically um, call upon it or reference it anywhere outside of my if statement. So this is a nested scope level. And so if it's within an if statement or within a condition, uh, within a loop, this is where it's going to be limited. It's going to be limited to that block of code only. And so it is not, cannot be used anywhere else. So that's our first scope level. So let's go ahead and talk about our second one, which I already have right here. Notice that I've got my name equals Matthew. Now if I go ahead and move this around, I'm going to actually cut this line of code out right here. I'm going to paste it outside of my if statement. So this is now basically referred to within my method. And this is a method level scope. And so what I've got here is this, this string was created in my method. It was outside of my if statement. Can it be used within my if statement? Well, if you look right here, I have no error in there. I said message box dot show my name. And so it actually still found my name and I can still use it. And if I want to create it somewhere else, let's just say my name. There it goes. It shows up in the IntelliSense equals Matthew. I can use it. And you'll notice that it actually works. I'll put the semicolon there. And I can actually call upon it later on. So this is really at my method level, which means that once I've created it, it's not within an if statement or a condition. It's basically created within my method. So I've got from basically this curly brace to this curly brace, any of the code that's written within this block or within the curly braces here under my method can use the my name string. So this is the level or the scope of the variable here at a method level. So now that's one step higher as far as its range or scale of use. So I've got, I can, if I created an if statement, it's limited to the if statement. If I created in my method, it's limited to my method. Now I've got one other level that I want to focus on, and that's if I want to use it in multiple methods. So I'm going to begin with this last one by creating another button on my form. I'm just going to go do a control C and a control V. Now I've got button two. I'm going to go ahead and double click it. And you're going to notice that I've got a new method for the click event for button two. 
If I try to use the my name variable, my name, you're going to notice that the IntelliSense does not bring it up, which is going to already tell me that it's not available for use within this method. I'd actually have to recreate it. I don't want to do that. I want to actually just have it once created. So what we're going to do is, and then be able to use it in through multiple methods. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move its location. So we're going to change its scope. I'm going to go ahead and cut that out of there. I'm going to paste it here at the scope level. If you look here where it says public partial class, and you've got our opening curly brace. Now the ending curly brace is right here. And anything between this is all considered the, within the class. And so I've got multiple methods within the class. And what I'm going to do is just space some things down here. And I can actually paste it right there. So string my name equals mat. Now this is at a class level scope. And so I can use this within all my methods. And so if I scroll down here, you'll notice that my name is still available within my button one click method, you've also can put it right here. So if I wanted to name it here, there it is. My name comes up on the IntelliSense now, and I can now say uh, maybe I wanted to change it back to Matt if button 2 is clicked. And so this allows me now to use the same variable through multiple methods. And so depending on where you create your variable, you'll determine its scope. And so the most limited is going to be within the condition the next limited uh, would be within the method itself and then the third which is the most far-reaching of the three locations we talked about would be at the class level which would allow us to use it within all of our methods and so forth so this concludes the video on variable scope within c-sharp